Still in shock, North Rothbury residents say they're angered by the news that the Minister for Planning has approved the rezoning of land which surrounds their village. That decision paves the way for a new town and an extra 20,000 people. If the land's been rezoned, then that's virtually a nod, isn't it, to go ahead and do the development. Huntsley Newtown will provide 7,200 residential lots, 300 rural residential blocks and 160 hectares of commercial land. Residents are concerned about a threatened species of the Personia plant being wiped out, not to mention the lack of public transport and an increase in traffic on country roads and the New England Highway. Transport in particular is a major worry. It's poorly serviced by roads. They're at their limit. The RTA, Rail Corp and the Transport Ministry have criticised the plan. Even the Hunter Business Chamber has its concerns about 20,000 extra commuters. The transport to and from that particular area has to be resolved with the construction of the F3 Link Road. So you have to ask the question, why did Minister Keneally make this decision at this point when there are so many unanswered questions? Uh, the Minister has announced the concept. Now we need to get down to the nuts and bolts and ensure the infrastructure is in place, the council will be involved. It's hoped the F3 to Brankston link will be included in the Federal Government's Infrastructure Australia package expected soon. Jane Goldsmith, NBN News. It may be a messy construction site now, but by mid-June, more than 80 mental health patients will be transferred into this new wing of the Calvary Mater. It certainly is a major um, milestone in, in relation to the Mater redevelopment overall. The unit replaces the centre at the James Fletcher, which has been providing care since 1871. The focus here is on creating the best environment for inpatients. There are a majority of private uh, or, in, or single bedrooms on site with en suites, so we're enhancing the, the privacy and dignity for our patients. The 100 room unit will almost be at capacity straight away, with some of the beds reserved for specialist care. There will be an additional 10 um, adult acute mental health beds and 4 psychiatric emergency care centre beds. Tonight a winning sculpture and mural will be selected from these submissions to grace the entrance to the facility. Research shows art can have substantial benefits for patients and could even contribute to shorter hospital stays. In the least, it's hoped these works will brighten the new centre, not just for patients but for staff and visitors too. Jenny Barry was given a helping hand from Swansea MP Robert Coombs this morning, gathering all the essentials for a community fundraising event on the Belmont foreshore this Sunday. Going to have sausage sizzle and um, jumping castle face painting for the kids and some music. Hunter residents have been giving more than just money to the cause, with an unprecedented number donating their blood. We've had a wonderful response from the people of the Hunter to come in and donate blood to help these victims of the Victorian bushfires. However, these victims are going to need blood for months to come, probably even the rest of the year. The Red Cross is so busy, we're now being asked to make advanced appointments to donate blood. Madeline Bond, NBN News. Since June last year, William Stark, Hayley Stubbing and their three children have bounced between caravan parks, crisis accommodation, even the family car. The couple has applied for hundreds of homes, all without success. They say real estate agents snub them because of their young children and low income. The Department of Housing has also let them down. And they Promise through Compass Housing that we probably would have a house, even if it was a unit, before, before Christmas. Christmas. It's after Christmas, Christmas has been and gone, it's the Too worst of my life. My kids can't even play with it, Christmas presents because I've got nowhere to play with them. The family is also on real estate agents' blacklist because they've occasionally fallen behind with the rent. It's not like we're bad tenants, the houses we all left, the they're all are perfect, immaculate. And it just comes down to you, you hit a rough patch of money and you lose everything. 
They'll stay at this caravan park tonight, but after that it's likely they'll go back to living in the family car, which incidentally is due to be repossessed on Saturday. The Samaritans say an increasing number of low-income families, sometimes referred to as the working poor, are facing homelessness. The charity doesn't have enough homes or funding for them and is asking private investors to help. There are good-hearted people out there in the community who have properties available to rent and there would be people who are prepared to give a certain family a chance. And that's all we ask for. It's a plea the Stark family is echoing. Could you help us please? <laughs> Not just us, just my three children. This kids, this is all we're concerned about. We've got three beautiful kids. They're not feral, they're not... They love their mum and dad so much and we're trying so much and so hard and we're just, we're shattering apart. Madeline Bond, NBN News. He'll get his first taste of the top grade at training tomorrow, but this afternoon Fabio Vignaroli was introduced to youth team players as he began his six-month stint with the Jets. Speaking through commercial manager Andrew Licata, the 32-year-old says he was sold on the idea of Australia by his good friends, Socceroos Marco Bresciano and Vince Grella. He said he, um, he knew a fair bit about the A-League because he used to play um, with Grella and Bresciano at Parma. Um, and they're very good friends of his, so from that point of view, he had a good understanding of Australian football. Another recent addition to the squad, Lubo Milicevic, is already proving his worth. On hand to greet his new teammate, Lubo's grasp of the Italian language could help Fabio settle in. Vignaroli describes himself as a versatile attacking player, but he's happy to play wherever the coach needs him. And from his point of view, um, you know, his intention is to uh, you know, do what's best for the club. After 15 seasons in Italy, Vignaroli attracted interest from the Italian second division and Chinese clubs before choosing the Jets. The father of three is keen to bring his family to Australia, as long as he rediscovers his scoring touch. Yeah, saying uh, in recent years he's played more of a wide role and more of a, um, a defensive role as well. Um, so from that point of view, um, that's probably why he hasn't scored as many goals. Mitchell Hughes, NBN News. A bag of toys represents unlimited dreams for the average four-year-old. But Blake Avery is packing them up for kids who are living a nightmare. The preschooler from West Walls End was so moved by a news report from a ruined Victorian primary school, he organised a toy collection and chocolate drive. All their toys got burned in the fire and they're all falling apart. 
I just broke out. Donations are flowing in, although they're still looking for a courier. It's in Australia, but it is a Victoria way. Yep. I don't know how to get there. I'd like to set up like a, a pen pal situation, have a sister school down there. Meanwhile, Blinky Bills at Saltash is organising a charity drive with wheels, collecting practical supplies for those that have lost everything. The centre is accepting donations until Sunday. Penny Evans, NBN News. The deaths of twin toddlers pulled from a backyard pool at Point Frederick on the central coast in late November shocked everyone. Then a child drowned in Charlestown and another in Musselbrook. All four look likely to end up in the coroner's court. There's a very good chance we would go to inquest and probably make recommendations to try and prevent further drownings. Too often the inquiries go over the same ground. And what we want to try and do, I guess as the coroner's office, is draw attention to those risk factors. Adequate supervision, adequate fencing, adequate gating and such as well. Today Kids Safe Hunter brought stakeholders, government bodies and pool industry representatives together to look at ways to increase education and improve regulation and legislation. Somebody had to do something more than what we've been doing in the past because uh, even after the Christmas tragedies there's been more drownings and more near drownings. One of the ideas being considered is a pink slip for pool safety where pool owners would need to get gates and fences checked annually. That's supported by Michael Morris, whose two-and-a-half-year-old son Samuel was left with permanent brain damage after a near drowning. We'd really be encouraging changes like mandatory ongoing swimming pool inspections to ensure that the fences are compliant, um, requiring pool owners to be competent and certified in, in CPR. When your delivery van is your office, a mobile phone is a necessity. I haven't been able to get a hold of anyone, no one's been able to get a hold of me, so yeah, it's been very difficult. Like many business people, Wayne Roger is demanding compensation from Vodafone for the inconvenience. I've tried to stop and use payphones, um, I mean drive around for half an hour to find a payphone that works. An apologetic Vodafone spokesperson told NBN News that an electrical fault at the Charlestown Exchange affected mobile services across the Hunter. Customers were told it was a fire inside the building. Many hit chat rooms and forums today to air their grievances, saying, I think it's a disgrace how they treat their customers. I run a business and there is a complete lack of respect. You can bet there will be no compensation for customers. And I am not happy at all as the service stopped working for me at the worst possible time. And a doctor from a large Newcastle hospital who didn't want to be identified contacted NBN News today. He said he was annoyed and worried that somebody could suffer because his mobile phone isn't working. Jane Goldsmith, NBN News. It was a ceremony full of emotion as those who saved lives in the June long weekend floods recounted their acts of bravery. Naomi Roskill waded across Lambton Road in chest deep water to rescue people trapped in cars and three stranded children. I was always brought up that when there are people in trouble you do what you can to help. You don't really think about it and that's exactly what I did. She received the Northern Region Commendation. Sean Douglas and Jasmine Johnson received certificates of merit for helping another couple out of a car after it was swept into a storm drain and tugboat crews aboard the Wickham and Watergan were given police commendation awards for helping three coal ships back out to sea after the grounding of the Pasha Bolka. The crewmen braved horrendous conditions. The seas were approximately 15 to 18 metres and they had a 10 second period so basically it's a three-story building coming through every 10 seconds but 
we just basically went out to do our job. Madeline Bond, NBN News. Just 24 hours ago, the Stark family faced a bleak future. One night at a caravan park, then back to living in the family car. But today there were smiles as they read over the list of people who responded to last night's news story, offering them a home and hope. I want to call up every single one of these people I have contacted at News and I will be thanking them just for the Make thought it. of calling News. Even if we don't get anything, any donations or any house or accommodation, thank you just for thank you for thinking of us. That goes a long, long, long way. Because, yeah, I thought we were just one of those numbers that left out that would be forgotten. The fact the Australian public has come to their aid when the Department of Housing hasn't was clearly overwhelming. There are some people out there that have got a heart and it's great to see that somebody out there does have a heart and that thinks in their heart, you know. There's not many people out there that believe in the old saying, it comes from the heart, not the pocket. And at the end of the day, that's what it seems like it's happened, it's come from the heart. The Starks are now praying one of these generous offers comes through. Madeline Bond, NBN News. What better way for Christy Dawes to prepare for the London Marathon than to train with one of England's best in some British-style weather? Under the guidance of husband and coach Andrew, Christy was joined by Blackpool's Shelley Woods, one of her main rivals. It's just nice to be able to be here and train with other athletes and, and also the Australian weather as well and uh, get some good coaching along the way as well. I think we just take any opportunity to um not only race together but also to train together as well. Racing since age 12, 28 year old Christy is enjoying the best form of her life, claiming silver in Beijing, a podium finish in New York and a win in the Australia Day 10k event in Sydney. She's only been to London as a tourist, so competing in the marathon will break new ground. The weather's never been very kind to us, so um, having done New York and knowing how foul the weather can be over there, I'm, I'm pretty prepared for it, but um, not looking forward to it. In stark contrast, Kurt Fernley can't wait. For him, London represents unfinished business. I've raced it uh, the last two years, came second in both of them by about a metre to the same bloke. So I'm keen to get over there on the start line and, get, and give it another track and hopefully it's uh, third time lucky. He'll travel to the Middle East on Monday for a handful of events before returning to prepare for his biggest challenge. All of March will just be 
just be around Newey, knocking out, you know, up, up to uh, 50k each, each day, you know, in two, two different sessions. Mitchell Hughes, NBN News. We know cash is the best, but some people don't want to just donate $5, so it's easier for them to buy a couple of pairs of socks and put it in a, a donation bin. The builders have moved out and the residents are finally setting up their new homes inside Newcastle's tallest building. Now known as the Grand Mercure Apartments or the Pinnacle, it's taken about 10 years and $40 million to complete. There are 74 apartments over 14 levels, about 70% of which will become serviced apartments for the hotel side of the business. 35 have already been sold and investors are showing interest. Lower interest rates are a big benefit to somebody like myself because you're paying 3% less for your money uh, and we're finding that the buyers that, that are buying have the money and they're looking for what we call safe havens. Mr Waterhouse believes Newcastle West has great potential but he's not supporting GPT's plan to cut the rail line at Wickham. For me personally if it stops at Wickham it is great for this development but I'm afraid I have a f feeling that any break in transport is a, a deterrent for people that travel. And a $5 million luxury car dealership is also being built in the West End just a few hundred metres up the road. The Kingston Building Project should be complete by June. Jane Goldsmith, NBN News.
all of the night's staff, from players to those in the office, were given a clear indication of what's going on in rugby league this season straight from the horse's mouth. As part of a road trip to all league clubs, NRL boss David Gallup covered a number of issues, including the rising impact of the global economic downturn. I think uh, club sponsorship perhaps is an area that, that there will be a challenge in, but rugby league can be a bit of an oasis for people in tough times. Uh, it is affordable entertainment. The players just want to get out and play, none more so than Isaac de Goy. Arriving from the Sharks to replace Denny Badiris, the new number nine gets his first shot in club colours tomorrow night against Newcastle league sides at Charlestown. Exciting, uh, playing with a new bunch of blokes. Um, you know, they're great blokes booking me um, early this year, so... Um, yeah, mate, can't wait to rip in and have a game. Positive news as well today on the coaching front. CEO Steve Burriston and Brian Smith agreeing to terms on a new deal thought to be a one-year extension. All that remains is the paperwork with an official signing expected to come around the middle of next week. I think we've reached a compromise position and uh, we're both happy with that. Jim Callanan, NBN News. There were all the usual sights this Valentine's Day. Amorous men queuing outside florists. Very, very busy. Lots of um, eager men getting their flowers ready for their women. And card stands all but empty. But there were also a few less traditional scenes. In Edgeworth, crowds gathered around the local butcher shop hoping to find a hidden Valentine's Day treasure. Last week, Colin Fisher bought a diamond to place inside one of his sausages as a way to lure customers away from florists and into his shop. Enjoy and uh, dig in. His promotion was a simple case of finders keepers.
Ruth brought in Rouse, the lucky winner. Is that the sweetest tasting sausage you've ever had? It's beautiful, 100% beef. Not to mention the one carat cognac diamond worth $5,000 that went along with it. We don't normally celebrate Valentine's Day, but I'm sure we will today. Colin was equally overjoyed. Yes, I think we might be giving the roses and chocolates a bit of a nudge out the door this year. I think all our butchers should get behind this uh, Valentine's and make uh, sausage the uh, meal of love. Meantime, Yvette Clues and Sam Kerr decided to tie the knot at Fort Scratchley, making their Valentine's Day truly one to remember. Cat bounces back, won it by three for Mister. Time Thief or Orange County photo trying to rally, then Weekend Huster and Orange County. It's Apache Cat though, he's clear. He'll go back to back and Apache Cat, the cat bounces back. What it he comes at it on the outside from court and Samantha Miss is starting to wind up now. Rock Me Baby took the lead, Samantha Miss is charging after her. Rock Me Baby just in front, Samantha Miss didn't get there. And Rock Me Baby won it from Samantha Miss or Glow Lamp, then Montana Flyer followed by by Portillo, then Palacio de Crystal, followed by Anatomica, Polaway, Love and Kisses, and then we've got LA Wonder, Zarok pulling up quickly. It was hardly the start Newcastle was after. Playing against a club side, the A-Leaguers had barely warmed up when they went a goal down, care of Clayton Poole. The maiden flight for many of the new Jets, Lubo Milicevic was quick to make his presence felt. But most interest centres on Italian star Fabio Vignaroli and Dutch striker Donny de Groot, and early signs look good. Vignaroli also looked dangerous when he got close to goal. And as time wore on, the combinations grew, but this is a game where taking chances are the goal. For all his effort, de Groot simply couldn't buy one for much of the match, as chances continued to come and go. Cramps got the better of Vignaroli, who looked impressive for a man who only arrived here on Wednesday. His Dutch counterpart continued to toil away without much success. Finally, a Matt Thompson cross picked him out and persistence paid off. It was only a trial, but you could sense the relief. The Jets plan to play again Tuesday night against Sydney FC. There's a lot of us who are only 21, 22, you know, and uh, a lot of us have played a lot of footy together in the juniors and uh, it's a great feeling knowing that I'm going to be playing with mates, you know, for another three years. Yes, I do love racing and I, I, it's in my blood and this position here, I was fortunate enough to get this and it's really uh, something I'm passionate about. Since last night, the State Emergency Service has been called to 121 jobs across the Hunter. The crews worked very, very hard last night. We had a lot of localised flooding, uh, not a lot of actual wind damage, but um, a lot of localised flooding, a lot of water running down people's driveways into their houses, a lot of gutters overflowing. Despite the SES's repeated warnings, people are still trying to drive through floodwaters. This car became stranded at a causeway on Lovedale Road early this morning. It's not the first time it's happened. I've seen four people received the most strain and left the area, while 147 fell at Newcastle. William Town received 135 millimetres, but only 44 fell at Dora Creek. 
The Patterson River peaked at 11.3 metres at 2pm, which resulted in moderate flooding to low-lying farmland, while the Williams River is peaking now at 6.1 metres. And the Hunter River is expected to peak at 2.5 metres at Raymond Terrace at 3am. And there's no relief, with the wet weather predicted until at least Wednesday. Madeleine Bond, NBN News. It was wet, cold and miserable at Charlestown last night and for Cooper Vuna it was the latter in spades. Badly twisting his knee in the opening period, the winger was stretched from the field with an early diagnosis suggesting he'll miss the opening few rounds of the NRL season at least. Conditions made it almost impossible to gauge performances but Luke Walsh did himself no harm in the battle of the halfbacks by sending Steve Simpson over. The same could be said of incumbent number seven Scott Giroux. He started there in the second period against Maitland and laid on two tries. The second finished off by Chris Houston, who was among the better to handle the horrible conditions. So to Isaac de Goy. A key off-season buy to help offset the loss of Danny Badiris, the former Shark was more than effective in his first stint in Knight's Colours. To be fair, there was little to be gained on the night other than getting match practice against some willing opposition. And there were still some heated moments on what was a cold night for all. On a brighter note, Fijian winger Aku Uate made a successful return to football after fracturing his ankle in last year's World Cup. Every three months this group of social workers and Port Stephens Council representatives get together to try and tackle one of the region's biggest problems, domestic violence. The group is working on a report to council which they hope will lead to more services for victims. It's agreed the few welfare organisations in the area are drastically underfunded and understaffed. We're always struggling and begging for services and funding that will support the services that are already existing. These services need to expand. Making matters worse, the region has nowhere near enough crisis accommodation, let alone Department of Housing Homes, for those trying to escape violence. We also don't have a local refuge. Um, one of our closest refuges is in Maitland, Carrie's place, and I hear that they're turning away up to 50 women and children a week. Madeline Bond, NBN News. Hunter Water is licensed to pump excess treated effluent from the Dora Creek Wastewater Treatment Works into Lake Macquarie. While it doesn't happen every day, it does happen when the Araring Power Station can't utilise all of the wastewater. It was brought to our attention by members of the public and that's not appropriate. Thousands of kilograms of nitrogen and phosphorus have gone into the lake since June 2007, damaging mangroves. But that will change by the end of the year when construction of a $5 million pipeline is complete, taking excess treated effluent from Dora Creek to Toronto. At Toronto we'll be looking for all sorts of uses. Um, the main ones in that area will be potentially industrial customers, golf courses. 
and if there's any left over from there, the so-called clean water will go to Belmont. The Wilderness Society has called for any effluent going into Lake Macquarie to stop immediately. The Council has asked the Department of Environment and Climate Change to review the licence to determine whether the amount of effluent allowed to run into the lake should be reduced. Colleen West, NBN News. Developer Malcolm Downey would like to see an 82 apartment development built here, but an application before council is raising the ire of locals. Friends of Belmont Airport say any building work on the 14,000 square metre site would endanger flora and fauna and is too close to the flight path of Belmont Airport. That's too much of a distraction right next to the airport for student pilots because a flying school will be, will be established there. Central Coast Aero Club is hoping to use the airport for commuter and training flights. I want to make very sure that nothing within that zone affects the possibility for us to have a viable air service operating out of air in the future, whether it's private aviation, whether it's a proposed flying school. A spokesman for the developer says the complex won't affect the flight path. He's also refuted claims the development would be environmentally insensitive, saying only a fifth of the available land will be utilised, with the remainder to be rehabilitated and managed into the future. The plan looks at zoning the park, it does very much try and subdivide the park into two really. It's focused cycling in one area and it is looking at removing cycling from another. Creative, confronting, Brianna Croft's work really gets under the skin. Get rid of the gruesome, grisly image we portray with the human form and really make us see how they are so intricate and perfect. Inspired by human anatomy lessons at school, Brianna sculpted from a range of materials, relying on friends and family to collect one particular resource. Every time they had any grapes or anything, keep them and give me the stems so I could use them in the, um, to create the lungs. Hannah McBride also looked within, painting two men she admired, singer Ed Cooper and writer Clinton Walker. I really just wanted to capture their personalities because they were just so different and that really interested me. The works feature alongside around 30 others, the best of the best from last year's HSC. Two years worth of work, really. It was a long, tiresome, very hard job. Art Express, an important step for the young artists. It gets them into the thinking of actual professional display and also exposing them to the public. And right next to the emerging talent, the enduring work of one of the greats, Brett Whiteley, is on display. Both exhibitions run until the end of April. Appearing side by side, Hunter New England's Health's Dr Nigel Lyons and review team leader Dr Andrew Pesher released the report's findings. There were some system um, deficiencies that we found, particularly in the ability to fast track a woman at high risk of a really painful and difficult miscarriage. The review team also found emergency department staff hadn't been given certain Department of Health guidelines distributed to hospitals in October last year on dealing with patients who are suffering a miscarriage. In his report, Dr Andrew Pesher stated, unless specific arrangements are in place, there is a significant risk that women who present to the emergency departments with miscarriage between 12 and 20 weeks may not receive care from the obstetric and gynaecology service. The hospital has now been given 14 recommendations to implement within three months. We've tried to focus on, on making practical suggestions to help the staff cope with that situation and hopefully minimise the chance that this will ever happen again. 
They include creating a fast tracking system for women suffering a miscarriage when the emergency department is full, accompanying women to the bathroom or providing them with a pan or commode chair to avoid the risk of miscarrying in a toilet and hiring a clinical initiative nurse to help fast track patients and midwife. Hunter New England Health says the review's recommendations will be acted on. I'm confident that the 14 recommendations that have come out of the review uh, will enable us to improve care for patients. Madeline Bond, NBN News. Jed's training was full of unusual sights, but this didn't even come close to taking top prize. Sasho Petrovsky in Jed's colours, though, was right up there. For so long, a player Newcastle fans have loved to hate, he's now one of them. And for those who need any convincing of his newfound loyalty, he has a surefire remedy. I'm sure as soon as I start scoring many goals for the team, um, you know, they'll take me on board with open arms. Every team hates a player like me, but... To have one in the team, I'm sure, you know, they'll be um, overwhelmed by it. First with Sydney, then with the Mariners, even Petrovsky concedes his A-League football journey has taken a few twists, considering the Derby-style rivalry all three share. And if plans work out, he's set for another. The Jets have pencilled in a trial match against the Mariners next week, and that's shaping as Petrovsky's first game for Newcastle. I'm sure the boys will be um, scared when they see me coming up against them, you know, they've already said to me, just make sure you don't score, you know, when you play against us. The coach can't get enough trial games and Sydney FC tomorrow night is their next test as their Asian Champions League opener on March 10 draws closer. That's too soon for their Korean import song though, given his ankle problems. So we want to try and give him enough time to uh, get himself right, so um, yeah, I, th I think it'll be, it'll be, you know, a long shot for, for Song to be involved. It takes a lot to get Cooper Werner down and the winger was doing his best to remain upbeat today, despite the obvious. Thinking the worst when he was stretched off on Saturday night only 20 minutes into the club's opening trial match, he's been heeding some good advice. My dad rang me up in the weekend and just said, hey, it's happened and you can't do anything about it now. All you've got to do is just train hard and try to get back into the team. But he knows best that's easier said than done given the growing pressure for positions in the outside backs. Werner's injury opens the door for the likes of Fijian flyer Aku Uate, who, ironically, made his return to football in the same trial match at the weekend after an ankle fracture. I just hope that they grab that spot and they hold it tight because if I get back in there I'm, just gonna, I'm not going to let anything loose. Werner will start rehab as soon as possible with thoughts of this tackle sure to spur him on over the coming months as he fights his way back. And confirmation today, the club and Brian Smith have agreed in principle to a contract extension which will see him remain at the club until the end of season 2010. Well, at the moment we're on standby, uh, just in case the uh, 
East Coast Low is still moving down the coast and it's done quite a bit of uh, damage up north. Wearing bulletproof vests, police from across the Hunter Valley, along with Polair, searched bushland in the Karua Nature Reserve, hunting for a man who had earlier evaded them. At 8.30, officers saw the man, along with two others acting suspiciously in a golden Commodore. They followed the car along the Pacific Highway near Karua, where one of the men allegedly pointed a rifle at them. Officers then travelled south along the highway before turning onto the Buckets Way. They then continued along the road to Limeburners Creek, where they found the Commodore and its three occupants hiding in bushland. Um, they've been able to detain two persons uh, who are currently assisting us with those inquiries. Uh, a third person remains outstanding. Late this afternoon, one of those men was arrested while the other was released without charge. Police believe they know who the third man could be. A couple of the police think they've been able to ident identify the, uh, the person and uh, we're waiting to get that confirmed. The police have gone back to the station now and uh, reviewing some photos and that of uh, possible suspects. Officers say he's already wanted for questioning over several armed robberies. Police called off their search late this afternoon. Madeline Bond, NBN News. Living in Newcastle, Mark Graham has access to hospitals, specialists and support networks such as the Leukaemia Foundation. The 34-year-old father of four was diagnosed with acute myeloid leukaemia in August 2007. Instantly just life stopped for that treatment, pulled out my job, life just basically stood still. Like other cancer survivors who have undergone bone marrow transplants, Mark needs ongoing advice and counselling. My beautiful little sister Shelley was my stem cell donor, which gave me the, the chance of a, a normal life again. Um, just the whole experience is very, very hard. It's been a long journey. Newcastle researchers will examine about 2,000 survivors of blood cancers and their carers to identify if geographical locations impacts on their well-being and their needs. We'll be getting a cluster randomly selected from rural and urban environments so that we can compare the differences between those two population groups. Mark's faced some major financial hurdles but believes there'd be more for those living in rural communities. The strain on just getting through it and then having to add on top of that travelling, that distance to get to the services, um, yeah, it'd be a lot more on top of what you've already got to cope with. It's hoped the results of the research will help to improve support services across Australia. Jane Goldsmith, NBN News. Along with a lot of other projects down the street, um, we're going to uh, uh, make it alive in the mall, hopefully. <laughs>
What started as a quiet night in soon took a dramatic turn. At 8.30 last night, Gail and her two daughters were relaxing in their living room when they heard a strange noise coming from the front of the house. Sally Ann rushed down the hallway to investigate and found a man climbing out of her bedroom window. I thought it was a friend, as I said, and sort of said hello and then realised it wasn't and then, yeah. Um, crap, who the hell are you? And then I realised he had my stuff and I was like, I don't think so. Grabbed it off him. Um, he went to walk out the gate. That was when 51-year-old Gail made her move. He went to get out the gate and I virtually just told him wasn't going anywhere because of the, you know, the police were on their way. The pair then began their own interrogation. I just said, look, you're not going anywhere until I see what's in your baggage. My two phones are in there. Before police arrived, the would-be thief escaped from the women empty-handed. Gail and Sally Ann say they were so angry they didn't give any thought to their own safety. I don't think we did anything, you know, heroic. <laughs> I think we just did what we had to, to do to try and cover stuff him from taking our stuff. Madeline Bond, NBN News. From light oil to heavy crude, fuel spills are costly to clean up and have the potential to cause lasting environmental damage. But this white powder known as CI agent could soon change all that. The potential that already exists is, is, is quite amazing. You know, this, this product just doesn't exist anywhere else. The product is applied to any hydrocarbon and within seconds begins to solidify, making it easy to remove. Originally developed in the US, the Hunter-based distribution company has attracted interest from Australian government departments, power plants, mining and maritime industries. The people behind CI agents say if it was available at the time of the Exxon Valdez oil spill near Alaska in 1989, it would have taken a tenth of the time to clean up at a tenth of the cost. The byproduct can legally be disposed as general waste in landfill, but can also be recycled. Various areas there of recycling, where they've used it in hospitals, road fill, uh, alternate fuels to boilers, and uh, making the asphalt uh, more flexible. Further research into its uses will now be conducted here in the Hunter. And the best thing about it is we're developing this product in Australia, using Australian materials now for export to the rest of the world. And uh, it's certainly our intention to, to keep the manufacturing base here in the Hunter, and I can see it only growing and growing. Mitchell Hughes, NBN News. Junior Sow is a perfect example of what can happen when given a second chance and he hasn't forgotten it either. Chased by other clubs, he wasn't going anywhere. I knew I was going to stay anyway because you know, Smitty gave me a second chance here so you know, it felt like I had to give something back to Newcastle. Without a club, only a year ago, Sow was almost lost to rugby with the Waratahs before Brian Smith threw him a lifeline. By the season's end, he played 12 games, scored seven tries and finished in such a flurry he was even mentioned as a World Cup bolter with the Kiwi squad. His new agreement effectively keeps him in Newcastle for the next three seasons and he's already got big things planned. Set my goals up for this year, you know, hopefully no fingers crossed I'll play for my country, New Zealand. Aku Uate has already done that, having represented his native Fiji at the World Cup. While bittersweet given it was also where he fractured his ankle, his return at the weekend and his international experience has him brimming with confidence. Last year of like, playing first grade and I was really nervous making my debut. But this time, like, since the, I go up there and play with the boys, just like playing with the Fiji boys, but it really gave me heaps of confidence and experience. Newcastle trial against the Storm in Melbourne this weekend. Time is of the essence and each training session means the world for its squad trying to gel in time for the Asian Champions League. 
Having only arrived in the past two weeks, Italian Fabio Vignaroli and Dutchman Donny de Groot continue to impress and calm the nerves of anxious teammates. A couple of weeks ago, you know, we were all sort of uh, biting fingernails to see what's going to happen in the booming happening in the space of three or four days. We had about four or five signings, so and quality signings at that. It's heart and the soul of the big glove man who admits he couldn't wait to see the end of the A-League season, but now feels fully focused on the ACL along with his teammates. We really do believe that it's a, it's a whole new step. It's something that we don't have to look at what, what happened last year. Um, you know, that's long and gone and uh, there's a competition coming up that's uh, so important for us. As for his long-term future, Kovic appears the most settled in months and with his manager back in the country, the completion of a new deal at Newcastle should soon come to fruition. I am kind of settled here with the family and uh, uh, do have family over here. So, uh, you know, I suppose we'd like the team find the best blend uh, that suits both parties.